let's review the basic operators that we can work with in Java. Operators are things like plus, minus, oops, divide, multiply, and the modulus, something we use for remainder that we covered in grade 11 that we need a bit of a reminder of. And so how do we work with these? Well, the simplest way is let's have uh, our first num be an integer set to two and our num two be set to four. And what I can do is have a num three and maybe have this equal num plus num two. I can have the variables that I reference be added together. Let's print this out and see what it says to make sure that this functions properly. I can see down at the bottom here, the number six has popped out because two plus four is three. Just for it to be a bit clear, I'm going to add some space here. It doesn't make a difference in how it's processed. Let's type in the minus and see what the result of this here is. We should be able to see that it's minus two down there. Wonderful. And similarly, for a multiply, when I multiply these two numbers together, I get eight. Two times four is eight. Let's just make sure that we know the division symbol properly. Run this operator on the variables and I get zero. This one is a little bit more interesting. So what's going on with this result? Maybe unexpected for you. Well, two divided by four is one half or 0 0.5, but we're dealing with integers here, meaning that we have no decimal values able to be shown. And whenever there is a decimal in an integer, it always rounds down. Let me show you this more clearly. Six divided by four has that same 0.5 value, but it's 1.5. So if I run this, the result should be one because that 0.5 got rounded down. So when we're doing integer division, we sometimes lose some information. So one way around this would to maybe be to convert all of these to doubles and work with doubles instead. Now that they're all doubles and I run this and I do six divided by four, I should have this decimal value retained. And there it is at the bottom, 1.5. Wonderful. But what if I didn't want these first two values to be doubles? What if I wanted them to stay integers? Let's see what happens if I now have a double num3 equal to these two numbers divided by one another. How is Java going to deal with this? And it deals with it very strangely, 1.0. So it does the the integer division and then it rounds the end from 1.5 down to zero but then it still represents it as a double that's not what we were looking for there's one more step that we have to do in this kind of mixed data type work and we call this casting where think of like in a in a film you have an actor that can have play many roles and you cast them in a certain role so this actor or actress once they played a pirate and in this film, they're going to play a, a, a heartbroken widow. And so they're able to change their form from one thing to another through their acting skill. And with certain variable types or certain data types, we can actually cast them to behave in different ways in different contexts. So what I want to do is actually tell Java that I want these integers to actually behave as doubles. So in brackets in front of the number, I'm going to say double and double so that I'm saying, okay, Java, I know these are integers, but right here, I want these to behave like doubles. And since integers and doubles are pretty similar, we're just adding kind of the decimal values, which are 0 0.00000, then I'm able to do this for this particular data type. And we'll see that 1.5 is the result. I can actually get away with a little bit less work. In this calculation in particular, I actually only have to cast one of them to a double and Java will prioritize having them retain that decimal information in this calculation. So casting is a thing that is doable for certain data types. I can think about any of these whole or decimal number values casting one into any of the others. So I could technically make this a byte, however, do remember that bytes have a very limited range of information. So if these numbers got too large, this would then not work. It would kind of crash my program. So I have to be very careful about casting. Normally, we really only cast between whole numbers and decibel numbers when we're doing that in the first place, however. 
So now we've gone through our four initial operators, all of them pretty straightforward, other than the divisions sometimes having some weird results depending on the data types we're working with. Let's cover the modulo really quick as well. What is this modulo doing? And I see I've changed some of the values for this section of the tutorial here. And 11 modulo 7 is what we're seeing here. And let's see what the result is of this calculation. 4. A kind of a strange number to come from these two, but what the modulo is checking is if how many times does 11 go into 7, keeping in mind the remainder. So 11 goes past 7, but there's four more values in 11 than 7. So that's kind of the remainder of this calculation. I could also bump this up to 25 and see what the result of this is. And in this case, the result is also 4. Interesting. What's going on here? Well, how many times does 7 go into 25? Well, 7, 14, 21, and then a little bit more to get to 25. So it goes in three times. That's not what we're looking at. It's not how many times it goes into it. It's how much is left over from how, the multiple of 7. So 7 times 3 is 21 four more to get to 25. So it's the the difference between that even divisibility happening. Four. What if I said just the number, oh, let's go with four itself. The answer for this one is also four, because if the number at the beginning of the modulo is smaller than the one at the end of it, then the, the remainder is just this. It's, it doesn't quite fully fit in, so it's just itself is, is the remainder. It, nothing really happened to it. Just to make sure this is really clear, I'll type in the number 7, and I recommend that you play around with lots of different combinations of the modulo to get a really good intuitive sense of how it's working. 0, there's no remainder. It goes in evenly. Anytime a modulo's result is 0, it means that the number is divisible. It's a great way of checking divisibility. It's a great way of managing a lot of different scenarios in our logic. And I highly recommend that you read some of the documentation I've sent to you in Teams to go over this in a bit more detail and mess around with it and practice it so that you really get a clear sense of how the modulo itself works. Okay, so we also have an operator that we can use just briefly because it's useful for right now. Let's think about something called Con concatenation. Some people say con concatenation, but concatenation. And this is working with the idea of conjoining strings or merging strings together. So let's say I had word one. Now you could say word one. I like to always use English words in my variables. It's just a standard that is nice and clean and clear. And so let's say my word one is hello. And my second one is world. And let's make a third one with the exclamation point. Now obviously I should just write these all on the same line together, but technically I'm able to conjoin these all together. Now up here I made a new variable to hold the operation that I performed, but technically I didn't need to. I could actually just put this operation directly in the print and the same output would happen because well, it's just doing the same calculation without the intermediary variable being created. This does mean that I don't store it in a variable, but it does accomplish the same outcome. So it's up to you to, uh, how you want to work with this. In this case, I just want to conjoin these things. So I'm going to go sout and, well, what I can do here is go word one plus word two plus word three. And let's see what happens when I press play. This plus for a string is for conjoining. And here I see hello world popping out, but with no spaces. So how do I deal with the spaces? Well, there's two options. One, I could add the spaces into my string. Well, I guess there's only one space here. Into the string itself, nice and easy. Or I could actually add the space in here. Check this out. I'm going to add a new string that's just a space and add it in between all of these variables. This here is concatenation, adding one string to another one in kind of a mixed way, a variable with an actual string literal, we call it a string itself. So down here, I should see that hello world now has that space in it. And maybe just to really prove the point, I can concatenate at the end here, uh, one more phrase um, 
this is going to be fun. With a smiley at the end. So Shift F6 is the shortcut for running my program. Here we go. Hello world. This is going to be fun. All on one line, I managed to use these addition operators to not do math, but to actually conjoin or concatenate different strings together. So there's a nice little quick recap of how we work with our basic operations. The final part of this lesson involves some of our more, uh, uh, some nice summaries of operations that we can do kind of in one liners. For example, let's say I have an int called uh, the input. I get some input from a user and I want this input to have information added to it later. So what I might have is my input, uh, maybe a different value that comes in. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's say input two, just to keep it nice and simple. We won't get these values from the user right now, but let's just say that those values were assigned something to them. What I can do for input is not just set it to input two, did I type something wrong here? Input two. Oh, it's telling me that to be initialized. Let's, okay, let's just set some values here. Let's say it's two. And I want to have my input not just equal input two's value, but I want to have these added together. So I what I did before is I made a whole other variable, input three and set it to input plus input two. But what if I don't need to do all this extra work? I'm gonna comment this out for now. What if I just want input's value to amalgamate or absorb the information from input two? So what I wanna write actually is, I want input to equal itself plus input two, add them together. There's a shorthand for this, plus equals. This sets the value of the variable to be itself plus whatever is to the side of it. So the value of input is now 7, the combination of these things. This also works with minus, multiply, and divide. I'm resetting the value of this variable to the operation that happens with it. So this, for example, would be equal to input equals input divided by input 2. This is kind of the same thing going on. So we have these kind of shortcuts for reassigning variables. Rather than making a whole new variable, we can do kind of inline calculations with these things. One last thing, int uh, num counter. This variable here, I'm going to start at 0, and I want it to count up. What I can do, num counter plus plus. This is going to add 1 to the number. I can also go num counter minus minus which subtracts one from the count from the number and then reassigns the number itself. So it's a little bit like, well, another way of saying this would be num counter plus equals one. And this one down here would be num counter minus equals one. I'm adding one to its value. I'm subtracting one from its value. So these are equivalent and these are equivalent. So a couple shortcut operators that make our life a little bit easier that we'll use at different times as well that are good to be aware of in Java.